This is part two in a series of videos in which I am recreating the main PCB for an ADM3 dumb terminal. In the first video in this series I gave a brief outline of the intention for the project which is to recreate this main board and make it as uh, accurate as I can to uh, this original board. Uh, I've just been doing some testing on this, I've been finding various faults on this and as part of the uh, reproduction I've also been repairing this board and I just thought I would include in this video a very brief um, outline of the testing I've been doing on this machine. I will be posting a video on this fault finding in due course um, but what I've been doing is looking at all the data and control buses within the uh, board system and one of the main reasons I've decided to recreate this particular board is because the nature of the electronics is very interesting. If you're into vintage uh, computers, vintage electronics, um, then this is one of those boards that you'll find extremely interesting. There's no microprocessor on here. It's all discrete electronics, mostly TTL stuff, uh, only one, two really uh, large scale devices. And it's the sort of circuitry that is extremely good for learning this sort of thing on, experimenting and really getting to know electronics. It's one of these very complex circuits but it's broken down into discrete blocks that make it uh, quite easy but uh, very interesting to work on. And we'll be going through this as this project develops but I just wanted to show um, the, the methods I use for testing this. So in previous videos on other equipment you will have seen me use a logic analyzer and in the past I've been using the Agilent 1670G and I still use that for most projects it's my preferred analyzer but for something like this I actually use my 16702B and the main reason for that is um, it's got a huge screen it's got a 12 inch screen on it and if you're examining something like a microprocessor system then the 1670G is um, just as good as this machine. The problem with this is it's huge, it takes up a huge amount of space on the bench which is why I don't really like it very much. But if you're examining a microprocessor system then most of the data you're capturing is in 8-bit or 16-bit data buses and it's presented as a single line on the display so the smaller display on the 1670G is fine. Unfortunately for equipment like this where you're looking at many more separate signals and they're not really data buses that you'd find on a microprocessor system, it's just collections of individual signal lines. And so you tend to find you have far more lines on the screen at any one time. And that's where this machine wins out, it's got a big display and you can easily put 20 or 30 different data lines on the screen at the same time and still be able to read it fairly clearly. Uh, I also have a full set of inverse assemblers for this machine as well so I think I mentioned in previous videos I don't use those very much with the 1670 um, but when I want to use them I'll switch to this machine. It has them all built in and it does make uh, life a lot easier for doing complex testing. Um, but for simpler devices I still prefer the 1670. Okay so onto the project. I'll get this shut down, it's a bit noisy and I'll get out of the way and we'll look at the project and I'll give you an update and show you how far I've got and then we'll look at the CAD system to see the progress on the actual board layout. So I've been working on the layout of the board and trying to get the design into the CAD system. As I showed in the first part in this series I've been working my way through the schematics and uh, translating these, creating the components in the CAD system. I've found quite a few errors in the schematics uh, and also some modifications between the version of the board that I have here and the copy of the schematics that I have. Some just seem to be updates to the schematics, uh, others seem to be uh, actual errors because there's no way the schematic would actually work um, the way some of the circuits are arranged in some of these schematics. So I've been dealing with that as I've been working my way through and um, I'm about halfway through the board layout. We'll have a look at that on the CAD system in a few minutes. Um, but one of the issues that was always going to uh, be something I'd have to deal with was the actual keyboard itself. 
So, of course, on the original, the keyboard is uh, integrated into the main board, or at least it's kind of integrated into the main board, the switches are. Um, but this board sits at an angle when it's in the machine, so it's, it kind of sits something like this. So the board is at uh, an angle and the keyboard keys are at a slightly less steep angle. When you look at it side on, the keys are actually quite um, highly spaced from the board. There's about two inches between the board and the tips of the keys. And I didn't really like um, the idea of having to have an only solution to this of trying to find a set of these keys along with the frame that goes around them. And so what I was looking at was maybe mounting different types of keys onto the board, which meant changing the board layout and the footprint. And I didn't like that idea much either. So what I've decided to do, and comments um, will be very welcome here, uh, whatever feedback you think is uh, appropriate, ideas, and uh, just general feedback as to the approach that I'm taking. But what I've decided to do is to keep the layout of the original keyboard exactly as it is on the board so that if someone can source these keys or just wants to recreate an original board they can do that. Uh, there is a lot of time and effort going into this so I wanted to uh, end up with something that's going to be fairly uh, true to the original. But I still want it to be uh, a project that you can complete if you wanted to build a completely new one. So the rest of the board layout will be almost identical. Um, as I mentioned previously, uh, one exception to that is I've switched from these mask ROMs to a more modern uh, EEPROM. And I've done it for two reasons. One is because uh, the two original mask ROMs, especially the lowercase mask ROM, will be extremely difficult to find. But also it means that the character set can be changed so if we can't find uh, a matching set of keys with all exactly the same characters, that could be dealt with by changing the character set in the ROM. Um, all this system really does is it uh, generates um, a binary number that relates to the key that's being pressed. And what we can do, of course, is change what the uh, representation of that particular character is. Um, having said that, I wanted to, again, try and keep as close to the original as I could. So the approach I've decided to take is to keep the board out as it is, with one exception. And that is to put a 40-way connector in that will allow a secondary board to be mounted in the position of the keyboard. So there'll be the main board, and then underneath the keyboard where you can't see it, there'll be a 40-way connector and that will allow another smaller board uh, in the shape of the keyboard to be uh, put on top. And that means that smaller board can be a standalone keyboard and that can be in whatever form is most suitable. The keys are scanned in a, a, a grid array and that means that we don't need too many uh, individual uh, wires going through to the keyboard. So a 40 way connector will be fine. And that means I can use easily obtainable uh, keyboard keys and then it's quite easy to get hold of a uh, key cap sets like this one these I think about 10 pounds a set and then about uh, 10 pounds for a set of uh, actual key switches can be all different colors of course and the keys are pretty much the same size as the original keys all different uh, designs and colors so um, it allows the uh, builder to use whatever uh, key cap set they prefer and then you just plug the uh, keyboard uh, assembly onto the main board. Or if you can manage to find a set of original keys, you can make it uh, exactly as per the original. So uh, that's the intention at the moment. Um, any feedback on that, any comments will be welcome. Um, but as I say, the idea here is to end up with uh, one or two things, either a truly original board, if that's the way it can be made with original keys, or the original board, down to the keyboard, fit the 40-way connector. Uh, I'll be supplying the small you know, additional keyboard as well. And then you just buy the uh, bare board, I should say. And then you just buy the keys and counts, whatever you prefer. And that will then plug onto the, um, the main board. Uh, and that way, not only does it lift the keys so that they're at the right height, but it um, allows the board to be completed with easily obtainable parts. Okay, so that's the idea for this.
So we'll look at the CAD system and I'll show you how far I've got through doing the board layout. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, PCB screen on the CAD system. You can see that um, I'm getting on quite nicely with the track laying and um, the yellow lines are the rat's nest lines. They show the logical connections that I've still got to make. Uh, when I first started the layout, there was about 3,000 uh, connections needed. If we look at the current report, we'll see that uh, there's only 162 to go, but I have not yet laid down all the keys, so there's probably another three or 400 on top of that. Uh, this has taken quite a long time. If we look up here, you'll see total editing time so far um, is uh, around 3,700 minutes, so it's taken a, a lot of time to get this far. Um, that does include laying out the schematics as well though. And as you can see, um, the board is starting to progress quite nicely. Uh, I've kept it um, as accurate to the original as I possibly can. Um, it does look a bit rough on the screen here, it's just the way the CAD system presents the, uh, the lines to speed up per rendering, but um, they do uh, plot out as very nice smooth curves um, when they're put out as Gerbers. And the way I uh, make sure I get the layout correct is I take the uh, board and uh, I'll create from it a number of semi-transparent images. So if I put one on here and then we zoom in, you can see that what I can then do is take the track layout and exactly match uh, on each curve exactly what the radius of the curve is that I want. So it matches the underlying track and I can get those um, as accurate as possible to exactly uh, match the uh, original layout. Now bear in mind, we'll zoom right in here, these tracks are 0.3 millimeters wide. So uh, you can see that we're just a small fraction of a millimeter um, from any um, particular point where the tracks are supposed to run to. So I've been working my way through, making corrections as I go. What I've been finding is that when I've tried to follow some traces through, um, they're incorrect. And so the board layout doesn't match exactly the schematics. So I then have to figure out whether the error is in the schematic or in the board layout. Um, but I'm working my way through. As you can see, I've um, completed most of this. I would guess I've got uh, maybe another 15 hours or so uh, work to do on this uh, and then once I've got the, uh, the keys laid out, you can see I've just been starting to figure out how best to lay the keys out. And uh, I will then add a 40-way connector uh, somewhere under the keys, uh, wherever is most appropriate and easiest, uh, run the required connections to it. It doesn't mean the board layout won't be identical to the original, uh, but the additional connector will be underneath the keyboard, so it won't be visible. Uh, as much as possible, I've been adhering to the same component style and layout, and uh, obviously the position of all the components is identical. I've been creating components that are the same size and shape as the originals. So we should end up with something that looks very close to the original design. And uh, as I say, this is uh, going to be quite a large board, so um, it does take quite a lot of work. Uh, any comments, welcome. If you're interested in this project and think you might want one of these boards when they're available, then please let me know.